AWS Bedrock agents can invoke functions to perform tasks based on user input. When using AWS Lambda to build these functions, you are often faced with the challenge of manually passing the JSON request response payloads. The AWS Lambda Power Tools for .NET library solves this problem with their new Bedrock Agent Function Resolver. This completely removes the need for any boilerplate code, letting you work with strongly typed c -sharp objects and allows you to focus on building your agent interactions. Let's dive in and see how this works. Hello, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my AI on AWS series. Power Tools for AWS Lambda is a suite of utilities for AWS Lambda functions to ease adopting best practices such as tracing, logging, custom metrics and more. I have covered various utilities from the Power Tools library in this YouTube channel before. You can navigate to the We Made This community section where they have kindly included my video links. Thanks to the team for doing this. The Bedrock Agent Function Resolver is a utility for AWS Lambda that simplifies building serverless applications working with Amazon Bedrock Agent. This library eliminates the boilerplate code that you would typically have to write when writing Lambda functions. In this video, we will take a quick example on how to write a Lambda function and how to include the Power Tools Bedrock Agent Function Resolver and make this work along with Bedrock Agents. We will focus on the mechanics of building these and also plugging these into the Bedrock Agents and not on the actual functionality. We will be using a simple use case for this. In following videos, we will cover more complex scenarios that might come up when building these functions. So let's switch over to Visual Studio and create a new AWS Lambda function to get started. So let's click the create a new project and select the AWS Lambda project type. So here I'll be choosing the AWS Lambda project .NET Core C Sharp and clicking Next. So let's make sure to name this project. So let's call this My Bedrock Function and let's click Create. Now this is going to pop up a tab to select the blueprint. Now since we don't have an existing template for this Bedrock Function Resolver, let's start with an empty function and add in the NuGet packages that we require. So let's select Empty Function and say Finish. Now this is going to create an empty AWS Lambda project which we are all familiar with. If you're completely new to building Lambda functions, I highly recommend checking out my Getting Started with AWS Lambda video, which will be linked here and in the description. So here we have the function.cs, which has the Lambda function details. So this has the function handler, which is the default endpoint that is getting called when this AWS Lambda function will be deployed. However, in our case, we're going to build a bedrock agent function, which means the bedrock agent will be invoking this Lambda function to perform user-defined tasks. So let's see how we can do that. To start with, let's add the new NuGet package that the Power Tools library gives us, which you can find by searching Power Tools Bedrock Agent in the NuGet Explorer. So let's navigate to the Solution Explorer and manage NuGet packages and search for Bedrock functions. So let's browse. Here we have the AWS Lambda Power Tools Event Handlers Bedrock Agent function. So let's add this into our project. So this is a stable 1.0 and this was recently introduced. So let's click Install. The package is successfully installed. So let's navigate back to our function and let's start using this package. Now for this, we need to create a new constructor for this class and initialize a Bedrock Agent Function Resolver class. So let's create a new resolver type and make this as a class instance variable. So let's specify resolver is equal to new bedrock agent function resolver. This is where we will be registering the tools that this function is going to expose. Now, since this variable doesn't exist already, so let's create a variable inside our function class. So let's use control dot and say create field resolver. So we have a bedrock agent function resolver that is being created in the Lambda Functions constructor. Now, if you're not sure about Lambda Functions lifetime, I highly recommend understanding that to make sure what this instance lifetime will be. So this will be living as long as the Lambda instance is alive and not for each invocation, which means when a Lambda Function instance is created, it can stay alive for a duration of time. I highly recommend checking out the lifetime video to understand this better. Now, once we have the resolver, let's modify our function handler. Now, instead of taking a string input, 
what we will be taking is a bedrock function request. Now, this is going to be the input. And then let's return back the resolver.resolve and pass in the input that we are receiving, which is the function input, and also the context that default comes in. Now, since this returns a bedrock function response, instead of returning a string here, let's update this to also return a bedrock function response. Now, we have a Lambda function set up for agent interaction. Now, the next thing we need to do is add in the tools that this resolver can work with. For that, let's go and register some tools. So, let's specify resolver.tools and let's add a new tool in here. So let's give this a name. So let's say our tool is going to return the weather for a given city name. So we can say get weather for city. Now this depends on your domain and what capabilities you need to build on top of your domain. This is a simple example to just get us started with the whole interaction flow. Now in here we'll need a city name. So let's return a function. So here this is going to be a city name and let's return the weather for that specific city. Now, all agent responses will always be a string. If you want to return an object, the best practice is to override the toString method so that the agent can resolve the object and figure out what that response means. Now, we will be seeing a complex response types in a future video. But for now, let's return a string. So let's go back to our code and return the weather as a string. So let's specify here the weather in city so let's use string interpolation is let's hard code this to be sunny for now we can change this from a database if we need but for now i'll just leave this as hard coded so let's make sure to return this function so let's make sure to register this tool to our resolver and now we are returning back the tool along with the resolve method and this knows how to resolve the appropriate tool so we have written our first Lambda function and the tool. So let's see how we can integrate this into the Bedrock agent. So let's first publish this to AWS Lambda. So I'm right clicking and say publish to AWS Lambda. This is available using the AWS toolkit. Now I have this connected to my AWS account and there is a video where I walk you through on how to set that up, which again will be linked here and in the description. Now let's specify the function name. So let's specify this as my Bedrock function and let's click next. This allows you to configure the role required for the Lambda and also the memory, timeout, etc. Now in here, let's select a role. Let's choose the AWS Lambda basic execution role and click upload. Now this is going to create this Lambda function in my AWS account. So if I navigate to my AWS console and let's navigate to Lambda and this function will soon appear here. So let's navigate into the dashboard where we can see the Lambda function. Now right now it's still deploying. So once it's deployed, we will have this Lambda function in here. So let's refresh this and we have our Lambda function that we just deployed. Now if you switch back to Visual Studio, you can see the function is successfully deployed and it's all ready to use. Now we need to start using this inside Bedrock Agent. So let's open a new tab in our AWS console and let's navigate to Amazon Bedrock. Now this is where we are going to register our agent and set up our Lambda function to work along with that. So let's navigate into agents and let's click create an agent. Now in this, you can specify a name. So let's specify this as my weather agent and let's specify a description, which is optional agent to give us weather details. Now this could be based on your domain, whatever you are building this for. So let's click create, which creates a new agent for us in here we can select a model for our agents. This is the base model that this agent is going to run on. So let's click select model and we have different options. Now, in this case, I'm going to use Amazon's NOAA Pro model and let's click apply. So this will be the base foundation model that we will be using for our agent. Now here we can specify an instructions for an agent. So you can specify you are a friendly weather agent and you will return the weather details for a given city name. So we have specified those as the instructions. Now we need to register our Lambda function inside an action group. So let's click add to the action groups and let's create a new action group. So we can specify a name again. So let's specify this as weather actions group. We can specify a description, which is optional, but let's go on to register our functions inside here. Here we have to specify the name, which will be the tool name. So let's copy this get weather for city and specify that name. In the description, we can specify 
given a city name, this returns the weather for that city. Now, this function takes a parameter. So, let's add a new parameter and let's specify city name as the parameter. Now, the description is the city name for which we need the weather. And this is a required parameter. So, let's make this required true. So, we have registered the tool. Now, we also need to set up that this is using the lambda function. So, you can see here to select an existing lambda function or you can even quickly create a new lambda function. Now, since we have already deployed, so let's select the existing lambda function and let's pick my bedrock function. So, now we have set up the action group. So, let's click create which is going to register our Lambda function and specify the tool details in this agent. Now, once we have set this up, we can click Save and let's click Test. Now, this is going to test this agent. So, let's click Prepare. So, once this is saved and we have prepared the agent, let's ask this our first message. So, what is the weather in Brisbane? city. So, you can navigate to show trace. Now, currently this returns that this is unable to serve this request. This is because we haven't given a lambda function the required permissions to be called by a bedrock agent. All we did was to select the lambda function and associate it with this agent. So, to give it required functions, we will need to go into the lambda functions. Let's navigate to the lambda function that we built, which is the my bedrock function. Let's navigate to configuration and under permissions in here we can specify a resource based policy statement so let's click add permissions and give bedrock access to invoke this function so let's specify the statement id so inside here we can specify my bedrock policy 01 specify the principal as bedrock dot amazon aws dot com and let's choose the action as invoke function because this needs permission to invoke this lambda function. So let's specify all three and click save. Now this is going to give the bedrock agent access to invoke this lambda function. Now this resource based policy is successfully added. So let's navigate back to our agent. Let's navigate to my weather agent. Let's say edit in agent builder and let's click save and let's click test again to prepare this agent. So, let's click prepare in this here and this is going to prepare the agent. Now, one thing I've noticed is that when you're creating the actions group, you need to make sure that you have underscores separating the action group name and not use hyphen. I'm not sure if this is a problem, but I've seen that this does not work when it has hyphens in the action group names. Now, once we have the agent again, let's ask this, what is the weather in Brisbane City? and let's run this. Now in here, this is going to talk to a Lambda function. It has the required permissions and this now returns the weather in Brisbane is sunny. Now the same, you can ask what is the weather in London and this is going to pick up that the London is a city name and pass that as the city name to our function. Now you can click the show trace and see the trace steps that it is following. So in here, you can see that it's thinking and it's also the text that it is being passed on. So you can see this is getting all the details and invoking the weather actions group and get weather for city function. This also says we have the city name as Brisbane or city name as London depending on the city name that we are passing. Now once this has a response from our Lambda function, this is going to show that in a user-friendly way to this specific user. Now, with the agent resolver function, all we had to do was just write one line of code and plug in our function, which talks to our domain knowledge. Now, this could be talking to a database, etc. But for now, we are keeping this simple. If you're liking the video so far, please make sure to hit the like button. It really helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Now, let's add one more function to this resolver. So, that is again done by using the resolver.tool and we can specify a new function. In this case, let's specify get temperature for city, which is going to return the temperature for the city. And let's specify a proper function if we want. So, let's specify this as a get temperature for city and let's define this inside our code. So in here, let's create the method get temperature for city and let's pass in the city name. So in this case, let's simply choose the option that it returns a string and let's also take in a city name. So we can specify city name as a parameter and this is going to return the temperature. So let's return a string. So again, let's use string interpolation. 
and let's specify the temperature in city name. So let's specify the city name is and let's specify a random number. So let's use random dot shared and let's specify next and give a number between minus 20 and 50. And let's also specify this is in degree Celsius or whatever metric that you want to specify this in. So let's return this string and we have the registered tool. So let's make sure that this builds properly and this is building fine. So let's go to our solution explorer and deploy this Lambda function. So let's again say publish to AWS Lambda. Now this has the details of the Lambda function that we deployed to. So let's simply click load. So this is going to upload the new code into the Lambda function and the tool now will have access to the latest Lambda function. Now once this is deployed, we can navigate back. So let's copy this function that we have used, which is get temperature for city and let's register another tool in our agent. So let's navigate back to agents. Let's go into my weather agent and let's say edit in agent builder. Now in here we have the action group. So let's edit the same action group and let's add another action group function. So let's specify the name and let's give the description as given a city name. This returns the temperature. Let's add a parameter. So let's click add and let's specify this as city name. Description is the same city name for which we need the temperature and let's make this as required again and let's click save and exit let's save the agent itself and let's test and prepare this test again because we have made changes let's prepare this again so let's ask this what is the weather in brisbane now this is going to go and resolve the weather function tool and return back the details for that so it says the weather is sunny so let's ask what is the temperature in brisbane and this time it is going to use the temperature tool and return that specific details. Now you can see here, this is returning the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Now you can also ask combined questions like what is the weather and temperature in Brisbane? It says the weather is sunny and the temperature is 46. Suddenly it jumped up from 24 to 46. But you know why that happened. You can also ask for multiple cities. Let's say what is the weather in Brisbane and the temperature in Chennai, which is a city in India. Now here it says the weather in Brisbane is sunny and the temperature in Chennai is 36 degrees Celsius. That's how you can get started with Bedrock Agent Function Resolver in AWS Power Tools for .NET. It's a great way to easily build Bedrock Agent integrations. If you're keen to see more advanced scenarios like wiring up dependency injection, accessing runtime context or customizing your responses, drop a comment below and I'll cover those in future videos. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make Make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.